Hey everyone, welcome to Phonogene 101. The Phonogene is an updated take on an instrument of the same name, originally designed by Pierre Schaefer. Um, you can think of the Phonogene as part open reel tape recorder and as part granular or microsound compositional tool, uh, or as just a crazy sampler looper, whichever makes the most sense to you. Thinking about it as a tape recorder, though, definitely helps understand the controls of the Phonogene and their purposes. Uh, on the left side of the phonogene, you have the tape tools, uh, and on the right side, you have the microsound or, or granular tools. Um, the tape tools uh, are definitely the most analogous to a open reel tape machine. Uh, the primary control here being the VeriSpeed control, uh, which controls the recording and playback speed, as well as the playback direction. It's a bipolar control, so at 12 o'clock, playback is basically stopped. Um, as you turn clockwise, playback speed increases in the forward direction, uh, all the way up to full speed forward. And if you go counterclockwise from 12 o'clock, speed increases, but in the reverse direction. So again, think about it like an open reel tape machine where it had a very speed control, uh, but this very speed allows you to go all the way down to transport stopped, and then all the way in reverse up to full speed. The VeriSpeed CV input also has a bipolar attenuverter, so this allows you to attenuate the incoming CV signal, um, but also invert it. Um, very flexible. Next up is the organize control and the splice button and trigger input. Um, again, if you imagine the phonogene as a reel-to-reel -reel tape machine, the splice button is very similar to cutting and splicing a loop of tape. Uh, although the f in the phonogene, it's more like marking uh, or segmenting the tape. Um, if you picture the internal memory of the phonogene as a strip of tape, whenever you hit splice, this leaves a mark or a boundary on the tape, um, like multiple loops, but stuck end to end, like one long strip, if you imagine that as the memory. Where, it, where the organized control comes in is it lets you select which of these segments or loops on this long strip or memory is the active one being played or recorded into. And it's again helpful to think of a strip of tape since the organized control selects from the leftmost splice um, to the rightmost splice as you turn the control up. When selecting a new splice via the organized control, uh, the currently playing splice always finishes before the newly selected splice begins playing uh, in order to have a little bit more musical and less abrupt uh, sort of feel and change to it. And to let you know when this is happening, uh, when playback is going, the playback direction LED, whether it's the reverse or forward one, when it's lit, will blink, letting you know that you've selected a new splice. Like so. So even uh, though you've crossed the splice boundary, the new splice won't play until the previous one uh, has finished. So this helps you out in letting you know when you're playing around or on a CV that you're selecting a, a new splice. At any point, you can hold down the splice button um, for about two seconds, uh, and this will clear all the splices, but it will maintain the recorded audio. So essentially just clears all your markings, but doesn't erase anything you've recorded. Uh, really handy if you've um, sort of spliced something up, you've made some mistakes, or you're sort of creatively on the fly splicing things, making new loops, taking all the splices away, breaking the thing back down again to get your original loop back. And of course, the uh, trigger input for splice uh, simply supplies a uh, trigger or gate, although the falling edge doesn't matter, um, as opposed to using the button. So you could use pressure points, um, gate signals from a sequencer like Rene or from Square Wave LFO, anything like that to be triggering record. The end of splice uh, trigger output um, essentially is a short trigger that uh, is output anytime you reach the end of a splice. Um, this could be the entire uh, memory if you have no splices. It's basically one big splice um, or any number of small splices in between. Um, so if you've made a couple small splices, you'll see that that's, that splice is a little faster now. That one's or smaller, I guess. That splice is smaller. That splice is real small. Uh, it's great as a clock source to clock a sequencer or resync LFOs, retrigger envelopes, anything that basically will synchronize some other events with uh, the end of your, your loop playing. Last of the tape tools is obviously record. Um, does pretty much just what you think. It records. 
However, one important distinction is that it records only within the selected or like the active splice. So if you have multiple splices set, you'll record only into whichever one has been selected by the organized control, um, which is really useful if you've chopped up a, a larger loop and then you can re-record just smaller sections. Last but not least of the tape tools is the play gate input. Now this actually is a gate input um, and the fall or basically the time that the input signal is high is important. Um, there's a normalized connection. Um, so if you don't plug a cable in, essentially it's always playing. Uh, putting in a cable breaks that normalized connection and you have to supply a positive voltage via your, your gate signal to play. And it will basically play and loop if it reaches the end of playback whenever that signal is high. Um, basically, just like a key down trigger, you, uh, a key down trigger uh, would, would trigger a sampler. Same basic principle. Moving on from the tape tool controls, we have the microsound tools or granular tools. The gene size control determines the uh, size of the divided playback buffer. So if you imagine a splice as your loop, the gene size will divide in half from that size as you turn it up, um, you know, in half some more, in half some more, half of that, half of that, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to a tinier playback buffer. Like the organized control, it has a regular CV attenuator. Uh, since this is essentially a unipolar control, you either go uh, from zero to some high amount, uh, it makes sense that uh, it not be um, bipolar. Along with the uh, gene size control is the slide control. Uh, which is a bipolar control. Uh, this works with the gene size in that it moves the gene, you could kind of call it a window, around within the splice. So again, if you imagine the splice as this large section and your gene size is this tiny section looped within that, what slide does is slides that gene position within the splice um, and you have a voltage control input for it with a bipolar attenuverter, which will essentially allow you to, under voltage control, slide that gene window or little loop around within your splice. Um, so you could slide through it linearly with an envelope, randomly with a random voltage generator, or sequence through it with a sequencer. Um, very cool. The gene shift clock input um, is essentially like a sequential version of slide. It moves um, the from whatever slide position uh, the gene sequentially. So if you have, if you've used the gene size to divide the splice into say 16 little slices, it'll go from slice one to two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, with each clock pulse. Um, that's pretty cool if you use some audio rate clocks and you can get some really interesting granular time stretching kind of effects. Lastly, we have our input, input gain, sound on sound CV in and control, and our outputs. The input is pretty self-explanatory other than pointing out that there's a preamp built in. So uh, the input can accept line level signals uh, and boost them up to normal modular levels uh, without a separate preamp module. Uh, the little marking here, uh, 10, 10 uh, pp, 10 volts point to point, is basically modular signal. And here is line level. So as you can see, there's a, a very large amount of gain there. The sound on sound control sets a mix between um, playing back uh, recorded from memory loop um, and the live input to um, signal input to the input. Um, so you basically use this to build um, loops dynamically, recording one pass, um, recording another pass, layering on top of it. Um, typical sound on sound kind of looper pedal kind of kind of things, um, but you can also use it as a mix control. Say you've already recorded some, some signal, um, a loop, what have you, drum loop. You could have um, a lead or bass line still coming into the input uh, and basically just use this as a dynamics mix control. You won't necessarily be recording anymore, but you can use this to balance between what's coming in and what's playing out from the phonogene. The sound on sound CV in is a normal connection here, a 10 volt normal connection. So if you input a control voltage here, this basically just becomes a control voltage attenuator. It's also very useful. Uh, you could use it basically as a built-in output VCA. Um, turn this all the way up, put in a envelope signal, um, and now essentially the output will be unheard until you fire off an envelope. Uh, built-in linear VCA, basically, very handy. All right, that's enough talking. Uh, let's get down and look at some basic patch examples.
Okay, the first example I want to show you is uh, how many cool sounds you can get just sampling some random quick thing. So I'm just going to bang something out, just some sound on the piano app here on the iPad. And we've already recorded it. Let's turn it in reverse. I'm gonna throw some splices into that. Play it real slow so we can time these slices right. So that's our first splice. Second splice. Let's see if we can chop this in half. There we go. Got some splices now. Cool, so let's work this into a patch. Okay, so what I've done here is I've uh, used the gene size control um, and the slide control. I've selected one particular uh, splice um, and we're having um, a sequencer, the Rene here, control the slide position. And um, just to give it a little extra interesting changes, the uh, gene size is actually being controlled a little bit uh, by the noise ring, the uh, the one output. The two output of the noise ring is uh, controlling the cutoff of the Schwemann MMF6 here, which is uh, filtering the output of the phonogene. The various speed control, we're leaving uh, static, so essentially one set uh, speed of playback. Um, and the last little thing of interest is I uh, have rigged up this Rene over here just for when I touch a pad, um, I have a gate signal going into the sound on sound input. So I'm using this as an output VCA. So it's really, it's constantly looping and playing back. You just can't hear it uh, until I touch a pad. And all that from a tiny slice of our one little piano sample. All right, let's try something else. Okay, here we're going for something a little more uh, avant-garde sounding. Um, again, same samples as before. We're still using that same piano sample. In fact, I haven't even changed any of the splices. Um, now we're going to uh, ignore the uh, gene control. We're not going to use that at all, nor slide. Uh, instead, we're going to have um, the Rene sequencer here control the uh, Vera speed, um, mainly playing in reverse. Uh, so it'll be in the in the reverse range, either fast or slow. Um, and the end of splice output is actually serving as the main clock for the system. So that clocks the Rene, um, as well as the noise ring here, which is generating a random voltage to select, um, or a random voltage to control organize, which will select different splices, which obviously have different lengths and being played back at different speeds, controlled by the uh, sequencer. So we get this sort of very dynamic, almost... Uh, self-composing kind of weird little 
tape music piece. Oh, the fine little uh, little tidbit is I have a self-cycling um, maths here, um, the frequency of which uh, is being also controlled by the Rene, uh, and that maths is uh, patched into the sound on sound control input, using it like an output VCA again. And that's what gives us that little bit of amplitude modulation. You can see here too when a new splice is being selected, it'll blink. Again, we're still using the same sample. We haven't resampled anything. We haven't even re-spliced anything. This is all just patch and knob settings. Let's go for something with a little more hands-on control. Okay, what I've got going on here is um, actually pretty simple. I did re-splice. Um, I cleared all the splices and then just uh, spliced it a little bit tighter so I could get the start of each of the piano notes. Um, more at the beginning of the splice. Um, but other than that, it's still the same sample and everything. Um, basically what we're doing here is um, we have the clock output from the noise ring um, re-triggering uh, our, our splice. And uh, this Rene over here selecting which splice we're playing via the organized control. Uh, and this Rene is sequencing um, the filter cutoff of the MMF6 fairly heavily. Um, additionally, we've got a little bit of random voltage from the noise ring uh, helping out. Um, but primarily, we're just getting a couple different sort of notes uh, or splices, really. And I'm controlling um, which splices on this sweet sequencer and then sort of just sort of timbral motion, the filter uh, on this sequencer. So um, I'll just sort of jam out uh, to wrap up the video. Uh, tune in for the Next video where we'll took, uh, take a look at some more advanced sampling techniques, splicing techniques, um, rather than just sort of general basic demos. Thanks for tuning in. Almost forgot to mention, whenever this Renee goes up by one, the other Renee also goes uh, up. Uh, when this Renee goes uh, to the left or right by one, so does this one. The X out is going into the X clock in of this one. The Y out of this one is going to the Y clock in of that one. So that's why you'll hear the patterns change when I mess with the filter too.